Mike Mac, my friend says one to one and Power Sonic. And in today's video, we're going to look at the lockout tags and how to install them. And that's after a few questions that have come in from apprentices and wanting to see how some of this stuff actually gets used. So I thought I'd do a quick video. And there is a fantastic one over on GSH by um, Joe and Gary, and I'll pop a little link to that somewhere over here. So you can go off and watch that. I'm not going to go to that depth this was just a, a basic request to see how you actually fit these because some people don't know and you don't know what you don't know and um, yeah let's uh, let's have a little look um, I'm using this TIS kit we've been giving these away over on the Instagram page and thanks to Steve from TIS for, for providing those to us to do that um, just to run over again what you get in that kit there's the proving unit and, and a nice bag for it there's the voltage indicators which also come with a, a separate little bag there that all fits together into this one case and then there's this bag that has the the lockout tags in and they supply a few with the kit uh, there's a couple of variants one is this one i'll lean forward and show you which kind of locks around the outside of an mcb yeah or in this case the rcd that we're going to demo that one on and this one kind of locks on the inside so a similar principle but just different ways of attaching them um, so this one I'll bring the camera up in a minute and you can have a look, but you, you kind of push the push the black part in there so it's extending the prongs and then you pop them into the, the holes on the, in this case the RCD, and that now can't be operated. But that's not the full part of the, the locking out job. And obviously there's the whole safe isolation procedure, but this is just the actual application of the lock. And you can see there, if I get you in a good enough position, that that's gone through those holes and if I'm to push that tag you can then take it out so if I hold you there again try and do this one handed get them back in there we go so it's back in again and now we'll, we'll apply the lock and um, talk through a bit about that um, so you can if you're just working in a, in a uh, on a job on your own it's just you as responsible for the electrical system and locking it off you can put the padlock on so in this case with the TIS kit you get a nice padlock and you can put your name on there and the date you've done it and there's a there's a tag to put on as well. As soon as that's applied and it's gone through the hole in the, the black part of the, um, the the toggle, you can't then push it, it won't, it won't undo so you can't get it off. So there's no way to put that switch back up and to, to turn the circuit back on, in this case the RCD and um, the lock supplied, you take the key with you and you know you're safe and working on that system with um, out the prospect of anyone turning it back on. And again, please run through the full safe isolation procedure. Uh, I think Adrian Davies got it on his channel as well at the moment. I'm not going to do another one of those, that's, that's all there already. And this just is in response to a question that was um, put onto the Apprentice One to One Instagram and YouTube channel, actually. Uh, there's also this device. And this is an important one if you're working on a site where there's a few people responsible for the electrical system. So it could be you're the person who's been asked to go off and work on a circuit, for example, change a light or a socket front, and you need to ensure that it's um, properly isolated for you to work on. But there might also be a supervisor who wants to know that that's locked off until they're happy is turned back on and a site manager. So you would use this in that case. And you can pop that through there. It, um, it kind of flips over. And that then covers that, so that can't come off now, and the toggle can't be pushed, you can't take that off, and you can then apply your lock with your label, so you would all have a label and a lock, and you pop it through one of the holes yourself, and then fasten it, key in your pocket, away you go. The other people who need to be um, on that procedure as well, they can apply their locks and their tags with their details on. And then when the circuit's ready to be energised, everybody's happy that it's um, safe to do so. Uh, you know, Sometimes on a bigger commercial premises, that's going to be more of an issue. A typical domestic site, it's likely just going to be yourself. And you don't need to go to that trouble. You can use these if you like, but you don't need to. Um, so that's one type of mechanism. I just strip all of that off. And again, I'll remove it. I'll show you this is the toggle now. So this one... That goes around the outside so if I pop that on there I'll bring you up again to have a look at that so same same sort of procedure for when you apply the actual lock so we won't go to that extent you see there that's around the outside now if you push that you can release it and it would come back off 
if you apply the lock, obviously you can't do that and it wouldn't be able to be removed until everybody's happy for it to be, so. Uh, there is also another type of device you can use, and that's this little thing here. There's a tiny grub screw in there, and the basic principle of that is if you um, position it onto the, in this case, the MCB, use a screwdriver to wind down onto the top of the actual lever. So that's now fastened on can't come off, you need to make sure you get it on nice and tight, there's no prospect of it coming loose. I mean I prefer the, the other ones to this but sometimes you can't get them in if they don't have the holes in position uh, on the MCB so you have to resort to using these kind of devices and, and that's on there now but you could still have someone come and interfere with it and pop a screwdriver in there and undo it and turn the power back on while you're working on the circuit. So again, if it's just a single site with yourself you can put the lock through. And then putting that through there, that makes it impossible to get a screwdriver in to then remove that device so that stays locked off. And again, you can use that on the main switch if you wish. Uh, and again, if you've got multiple people who are responsible for the electrical system and the surf isolation procedure, you can all have a lock on this and the locks don't get removed until everybody's happy for the um, power to be restored. So yeah, that's those couple of different lock off devices. And again, I'll uh, pop a link to Gary's video, Gary and Joe's video up somewhere over here again now, and you can go off and look at that one. There is another excellent video that's just popped up from Craig O'Neill and his um, Completely Electrical channel. He's got some fantastic stuff over on there. I've watched a few and learned something myself this afternoon. Highly recommend if you're currently an apprentice who's out of college and looking to, to learn a bit more of the theory aspect. Um, of your course to go and check his channel out. He's a, he's a lecturer at the top of his game and he's gone to the trouble of creating a load of content on YouTube that will help you massively. So I'll pop a link to his channel up here or the logo of it at least. You might have to go off and search on YouTube. It depends how good my editing is. Um, but there's Craig O'Neill as well, um, completely electrical. Highly recommend you check it out. Uh, and again, this is just a demo of the TIS kit. Brilliant of Steve and TIS to, to give us some of these to put in the hands of apprentices. A really good value um, safe isolation kit and the beauty of it is it comes with a proven unit. You get a few of the devices to, to lock off certain types of switches and breakers and the voltage indicators as well. And aside from the reason of keeping yourself alive, which is the whole purpose of safe isolation, you want to be making sure you're safe. There is actual legal requirement there to make sure you do so as well and that you're always working in a safe manner and that circuits you're working on can't be re-energised and that's courtesy of this here. So the Memorand Memorandum of Guidance on the Electricity at Work Regulations 1989 and that's a statutory document and must comply with it in all works you're doing related to um, electricity. So go and have a read in that and again someone else asked about the, the books. I didn't show this on the last videos but that's Guidance Note 3. Um, it's not that expensive, you can go and get it from a, a CPS provider, wholesalers stock them, they're on Amazon, the IET. Well worth checking out if you're about to do your test and inspection with college and you've not been in learning with the lecturers for the last few months. Um, you know, Go and get yourself a copy and have a read up on there. And yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. I hope this video has um, helped in some way. And uh, go and check out all of the other great content that's on YouTube. Uh, again, I know everyone's struggling with access to training and even getting into work and doing stuff, but there's, um, there is Joe Robinson, there's Gary Hayes, Adrian Davey, Craig O'Neill, Sparky Ninja, John Ward's got stuff on his channel as well. Uh, all sorts of stuff out there if you go and have a dig around. There's all of the um, YouTube sparks who are out on site as well, and a few of them who I can think of off the top of my head, and don't hold me to this because I will forget some, but there's David Savory and Nige, um, there is... Nick Bundy, there's uh, Tom Nagy, CJR, Artisan Electrics, uh, Luke Wichard, Dan from DSS, um, there's, a, there's plenty of others as well. Go and have a look around on YouTube, there's loads of sparks putting the content on there of work they're doing outside, and there's loads of people putting some of the theory aspects on there as well. So there's plenty of resources to go and dig into if you've got some of your exams to be getting on with and not being able to get into college or speak to your employers of late. And yeah, just take care, see you all in the next one.